So Cyclant just released a new firmware for the SDM series of their multimeters. Now mine's a 3065X. Now previously I've done videos about this, about the calibration and the user calibration that they initially uh, made available about a year or so ago, maybe two years ago now, I can't remember now exactly. And I actually built a website to do the calibration file. So you actually put your calibration data in and they spit out the file for you and they to import that so it makes it a bit simpler. And at the time I did the videos about how, the way they'd implemented their user calibration. I gave them some feedback about how I thought they should be doing it. So I know they watched it and actually took that on board and they have modified their calibration process. So now instead of having to use a script which you have to import or a file you have to import and use my website or whatever method you end up using, they've now got on-screen calibration which is brilliant. They actually listened to what I suggested and they've actually adopted it. So that's great. I'm going to show you a bit about this. Now I've got my Advantis R6581T eight and a half digit multimeter here now these aren't perfect multimeters it is an eight and a half digit but they do have linearity things so they're not perfect but for calibrating a six and a half digit should be no problem whatsoever these are pretty good but they do have linearity things which are known about so it's still two orders magnitude more than this meter so it's fine as long as you've got one more digit it's fine i do have a little bit of noise here you can probably just see it popping up a little bit i've got averaging as well but it's not too bad it sometimes jumps about five digits or so so what I'm going to do just to make this a bit easier to see, and I'll drop the lighting down a little bit. It's going to get a bit dim, maybe a bit grainy, but it makes it a bit easier to see the displays. So I'm using my Datron 4700 calibrator to provide the source for this. So I'm going to base it off this reading of this thing. Now what I'll do before I actually start is I'll do another internal cal on this, which just makes sure it's all good. And then I'll tweak the calibrator output to get a nice reading on here. I'm not going to show you every single thing, but I'm going to show you the start of doing the calibration so you know how to do it and you can just follow through the rest of the sequence yourself I don't have to show you the whole thing this will give you a good starting point of what to do so you go shift utility first system setup calibration this is obviously once you've got the newer firmware installed the firmware is 3.01.01.12 R1 or newer so here's the calibration screen it's coming on factory calibration if you want to do user calibration you come in here to user calibration or user recalibrate then you push on recalibrate okay this opens up the menus and gives you the option to change it so you have to choose which range and stuff you're going to do manually so we're currently set up to do the DC volts 200 millivolt range auto zero on you also have to do auto zero off as well so you have to do both for all the ranges on DC volts so to change this you do edit now what you see here in the very first box is the reading which should be seen right this is what the multimeter is seeing and in this box over here you put what your source is actually generating so i'm just going to start down here start the positive one millivolt i don't think the sequence actually matters because you've got to submit them all in one go at one time so i think these are just calibration steps not necessarily in sequence so one millivolt is what you want here so we'll save that one i've already adjusted it now we'll do the positive 199 millivolts so calibrate stabilize so you bring this down edit I want to do positive 199 millivolts that's exactly what's got on the Adventist save that and we'll come down and do the other end of the scale so that's now ready to go it's still stabilized so we can do negative 200 we get down to that one so that's oh, negative so that's minus 199 and that's exactly what we've got the Adventist save that one then we'll do the minus one millivolt range. Every time I change the setting on a calibrator, I need to give it a chance to stabilize, which is why I'm stopping and starting the video, because I need to let it stabilize so it's all consistent and even. Things have to reach an equilibrium. So that's now doing minus one millivolt exactly. So we can adjust that one. So minus one millivolt exactly. Save. So now we do perform calibrate. Am I sure? Yes. Data is in false apparently. So that means it should now be reading correctly in all the particular modes. So auto zero on and the 200 millivolt range is now calibrated. We have to repeat this now for auto zero off. That will calibrate the 200 millivolt range completely. Exactly the same process to repeat the whole thing. And then we've got to do the same thing for the 2 volt range, 20 volt, 200 volt, and 1000 volt ranges in order to calibrate all of those as well. It will take a while, but at least it's doable now and it's much easier than the previous method 
So this has only done a 200 millivolt range. I haven't done any of the ranges so far. I've only done 200 millivolts with or without auto zeroing. And I'd say there's a bit of noise in here, which is going to be affecting his reading slightly, but that's one millivolt. Just do 10 millivolts help on the calibrator. We'll see what we get. These things should basically match. They do. Look at that. That's pretty close. Again, noise is playing a bit of a factor here. So 100 millivolts. Set the calibrator to nice rounded numbers. There we go. 9984 or so, 9984, 85, jumping around a bit of noise. That's looking alright. So that's the 100 millivolt ranges. I was going to do plus and minus, but also go to TV2 volts and do auto zero on. We should be getting basically the same numbers. It basically is. Again, noise is playing a bit of a part here. But it's looking pretty close. So the calibration worked. So the thing to consider about this, because I do have a bit of electrical noise here, as it's reading the values when you're doing a calibration step, it, sh it shows the reading you're seeing. If you happen to push save at that point where it's got a little bit of noise coming through or because it's reacting very quickly, it may offset it very slightly. It's going to be potentially very slightly offset. So this one's looking close, it's only like five counts out, which isn't too bad. But if you really wanted to fiddle with this, you could probably get it better. And like I said, I've got lots of noise around here. There is no guarding on this thing, so the guard cable is here. The other end is plugged into the guard of the calibrator, but that end is not connected. So that may be playing a part as well. I mean, if I plugged it into here, it probably would change it. Not by a significant amount. But it did affect this one, interestingly. It's obviously tying them together. It did have a very slight effect, but almost negligible. It is plugged in the other end. The idea is to get rid of any stray currents on the cables. But I'm not a calibration expert. I'm not showing you what I know, which isn't that much. <laughs> this is what we've got. So that's not looking too bad. I'm happy with that. That range is looking good now. And I'll go through and do the 2 volt range and all the others without you watching, because you don't just see me do a whole lot. But the idea is you've seen how it's done, and it's much more straightforward than the original spreadsheet method. So well done Suglant for doing that. I'm glad they listened to my suggestion and they took it on board, so good on them. So I thought I'd show you one more thing. Now on this particular meter, I think the 3055 and stuff don't have it. I think it's only the 3065's got it. Um, input Z. Input impedance. So it's currently set to 10 meg. Now this one you can actually do 10 gig. You can actually do 10 gig on this. Now watch this meter reading when I go to 10 gig instead. See? Just doing that can affect your readings. Something to consider. But as long as it's calibrated to the way you're going to use it, it shouldn't actually matter. <laughs>